blow. So, how to run a nuclear reactor. Let's run through this a little bit. I'm not the best expert on this, but I can at least help you in understanding some of the concepts and getting it stable. I'm going to start with a new game here. Lights turn on. We're going to go take a walk everywhere to get the points because there are objectives to just view all the rooms. For the most part, during startup, you're not going to have to go running around anywhere unless you have random catastrophes going on. is running off of the emergency generators that are up here. Only one generator right now. As we can see, green light, it is started. If we were to stop it, the power would go out everywhere. Things to explain in this room are for the AO, any extra batteries we can put in here, and they'll be able to charge him in case our generators aren't working. We do have some extra fuel to pick these up. You can just place them back down if you look towards like the top of a rack, or place it right back in instead of just tossing everything on the floor. These are the only batteries that will actually power your base if there's no power. These ones are just for storage. take damage like that, it will slowly recover. Not a major mechanic right now. So for startup, we don't really have to worry about over here. We don't have to worry about over here. Stuff over here, we have to worry about inserting the core and activating the panel. We can't insert the core yet because we do not have the system set to nominal. We're going to go around, we're going to turn everything back on, and then we'll go through everything. Well, so turn him on so he can talk. And I am the operations assistant for the reactor. The plant is ready to go into operation. If you need my help, please let me know. No, we don't need your help right now. As we can see right now, the core is in a nice passive room temperature and pressure. Core is not reactive, there is no critical mass going on. New operating mode established. Nominal mode. We'll turn on nominal. We're going to put this on to 49. We're not going to start it up yet, but this is a good basic ground as there are objectives for running it under 50%. And it's a good thing to just leave this alone while you're trying to figure out how everything else interacts with each other. And then here's our two big friends that are very confusing. First things Operator. first. If you need assistance to start up the reactor, first things first. remember that you can ask me for help at any time. Can 
inventor values at 5,000. It will level out to 1,000. We can fill it up right now. The more level that is in here, the more volume, which also means it takes longer for it to heat up. So we do want to keep that high, but not too high. We also don't want that stealing all of the heat from the rest of the reaction. So we're gonna let that turn on. And we'll preset some of these values. hear the pump turning on it has to build up some pressure before it actually starts filling and it will actually continue filling while it's powered down to as it spins down so we'll wait for that to get to about 8,000 and shut it off These cooling circuit pumps, there are three of them. We can't really keep them running while the entire generator is running. They will wear out faster because they are not designed for long-term use like all the other pump systems here. We're a little over, but the condenser will auto-level itself back off to a thousand. So that is fine. Here, we're going to insert the core. Animation there. But we're not going to have anything being reactive yet, as the rods are still fully in. You can click the numbers there, or you can also use the plus minus to go one by one. We're going to set it to 98 a nice value to start and go through slow and learn. We are also going to be turning on the pressurizer at this time, leaving it at high. The heating power of it will slowly go down as the heating rods inside the pressurizer wear out, but it is not the integrity of the pressurizer. That do its thing. And we're actually going to slow this down to 99, as we do not want the internal temperature hitting over 100 before we get the pressure up to prevent it turning into steam. Temperature of the control rods will be in the yellow while we're at optimal temperatures. That's fine. Yellow is not a bad thing. It is just a cautionary area. We don't want to be getting it into the red as that will quickly degrade the integrity of the rods, making them less effective. At this point, we're gonna get the main core. The reactor core coolant has started to circulate. Everything here is filled at this point. And this will start bringing some temperature increases over to the steam generator. The reactor has reached critical mass and its status has changed to reactive. As the voice has said, once we hit about 55 is when that happens. And now we wait a bit. As we are not creating any steam, we do not have to really worry about our steam generator and any kind of flow going on here yet. We want it to build up heat. Turbines, we will also hit connect to network right now. Slow down the 
heating here. This is, the pressure will consistently drop until the temperature stabilizes. So as the temperature is going up, the pressure is going to go down, so we will have to keep turning the pressurizer on and off. Thankfully though, we can do it at a low state here. here and get more heat generated. The pressure of the lights will sometimes update a little slow I've noticed, but usually if you come over and look at it you'll be fine. right now are these. So we are now hitting steam. We are going to want to make sure that we do not get this down into yellow as we will get the steam detected alerts at that point. I also find you can usually get this up to about 170 while doing turn on without causing any major issues. So we'll do that right now, and then we'll go take a look at everything down there. turbine doesn't have anything in it yet because this is still building up and we don't really have any flow going on. This is showing liquid volume, hence it's going down as things are turning into steam. It is slowly building up pressure and the temperature is going up. We're going to start getting this flow working, which is then also going to slowly bring up some condenser temp. As well, let's get this guy going. Main things to worry about are if the volume is getting low, you want to increase the flow speed here. That will keep volume up, but it will lower down pressure and in turn temperature as we are offloading the heat elsewhere. As the pressure goes down in the steam generator, pressure will go down in the turbine, which then leads to us losing power. If we leave things alone, it will stabilize. But we also want to be careful that we are not putting too much flow and increasing the level here too much. As we can see, that is happening. And that's what happens if you go too fast with adjusting your numbers. So you want to try and do 3% max for any kind of adjustment and see what it does. And as we can see, the value is now lowering and will level out somewhere. We are going to want to get the condenser. 
venture going. Essex's temp is starting to go up and it is starting to lose volume. It will cycle around and the volume will go back up. trying to get the core temperature up to about 360, as that is optimal. This can be done faster by lowering our rods. But we don't want to do that too fast, as then you're running around everywhere and you're not really noticing the number changes. this uh, top back up again. We're also going to wake him back up and Operator. have him go check around and see the status of the analysis of the situation of the plant. That'll show us if we've done anything wrong and if we actually have any issues that might start happening due to integrity damage. But we shouldn't have any right now. And our level's running a little low, so we will adjust it. Another reason for not doing too big of an adjustment is it's going to throw off the pressure too much, which will kill out our power, and then you run into a point where you're back on generators and batteries. At this point, we can shut off the generator, or at least set it to automatic. That way we are not wasting its fuel, which we can go back upstairs and fuel once we're a little more stable. Our numbers here are within the values they should be. Our outer vessel, which is all that nice water that you can see out here, isn't actually receiving any heat. It's not getting any kind of transfer of anything, which is good, as that is one of the last lines of defense. too high, so we're going to bring it speed up. As we can see again, it's leveled out at about 10,000. Uh, 10, it should never be gaining any kind of pressure. It should always be down at 1. And you want to keep the temperature under 100. Normally I've noticed you want to try and keep it under 70, though. We've been good so far, we haven't had any warnings pop up, and we're actually producing power already.
things to also remember is when you're trying to do a shutdown, you basically want, want to slowly cool off the reactor, so you don't want to make it create less heat by adjusting rods. And then you want to bleed off this heat into the other systems so that they can get it out through the condenser eventually. But you also do not want to let the pressure get too high as everything is adjusting in here, or let the pressure get too low while you're still creating steam, as then you will fill the re reactor with steam. As we can see, we are doing 390 right now, which is pretty good. We can still get a bit more by adjusting everything over here. find at least while we're trying to get the temperature stable, just keeping it between the yellow and green seems to be useful. There's always a little bit of jitter in the values, but you can usually adjust and see that it cycles between about two or three numbers, and you can watch them increase or decrease. As we can see, we are still slowly increasing, which is what we want. But we will want this to level out and be around between 150 and 160 once this is at 360. Another thing to note, at least in this version, is if you save and then load, when you load back up, this heating power will reset to high, so do be careful of that. See, we also haven't really touched this, as we are just letting this be a certain amount of Operator. heat that is cut from Maintenance over here report is complete. and going over there. Now, you can check it from your tablet. We'll go take a look through the report, which we can just skip looking at this screen and go right to here. And as we can see, the control rods have their normal amount of wear. These three pumps have their normal amount of wear. And the pressurizer heater, as I said, is slowly wearing itself out. These are all fine and this is how it should be. These will wear themselves out at different values depending on what you're running them at, which is why I try not to run the condenser consistently at 100 and only run it at what I need to. this is all helping at this point to at least understand the interactions between the different systems here. If you're ever worried about the level here being a bit low, we can always go over and turn this on for a few seconds. This will shock the condenser temp as it will be introducing colder water and will increasingly lower this temp fast, which can cause a dis disruption in the balance of everything. But now we're over 10,000 and it will level itself back out to 10,000. As we can see, this dropped about 20 degrees. Here, and we notice as the temperature is getting more stable, the 
vessel pressure is not decreasing as much. Not that there is much that we have to worry about over here unless we are running into problems somewhere. There will be an a maximum amount of power we can get out that is based off of our coolant speed as well. But as you've seen, we haven't had to touch this at all and we are worrying about adjusting everything else to match the this thing's level. Once we get to a point that we're gonna need more power, we can increase this flow speed and then you adjust all the other systems up as needed. As this will then cause the steam generator's level to fall, its temperature to rise, which in turn increases the pressure slowly over time. To compensate the level going down, we increase the speed here, which lowers the pressure. Which then gets more going into here, and also will adjust these values. The amount of power in here will also increase in general, just from increasing the flow speed here, as we are getting more heat into the system through this. Though, as we can see, we are just hitting demand already this far in. Not that we're getting any points for it every hour until the second day. keep this video going until we actually have internal temperature level. As at this point we are going to put the rods back in more to slow down the rate that this is going up and try to find our nice little equilibrium between everything. But at this point, we are actually pretty level with everything. If we wanted to, we could mess with steam generator, putting a little bit more flow speed in to 
get this more into the green as well as get the pressure hopefully up into the green but that does take a little bit and if we do it too much we will shock the turbine and destroy our power channel and there will be an upper lever upper limit where we will eventually be cooling this off too fast and not giving enough into the turbine generators. Instead, moving it all into the condenser too fast. see that is now going back down now and we see it cycling between about three different values and hopefully this has helped everybody at least some people I'm not streaming this game right now but if there is interest I will you can find me over on Twitch is the same name as this YouTube channel. And at this point, we will end this video here. Right. Have a good day. I'll be in the Discord to help with any questions, and, and anybody else in there will usually be able to help as well. Okay, take care.